a hostile country is trying to build a nuclear bomb. Behind the plot is a mastermind focused on the destruction of Israel, General Mohammed Suleiman, who hated the Israelis and hated the state of Israel. It will take three elite black ops units to deal with this menace, special forces operating deep within enemy territory to confirm the threat that was an extremely risky intel gathering mission. If there was one mistake made, it could have started an entire war. An elite flying unit to take it out as they destroyed their target? They exited, they lost nothing, and finally, an assassination unit to deal with the man behind the threat. That's what is known as Operation Outside the Box. It took years of intel and deliberation for this secret mission to take place. Before that, different intel operations were carried out in order to give substantial information that could help as a deciding factor to attack the Syrian nuclear reactor site. Just some background to the operation. When the Israelis come to know the possible connection of North Korea and Syria, Ehud Olmert gave the order to prepare for an aerial attack on the Syrian reactor. It will be known as Operation Outside the Box, and for it to succeed, Ehud Olmert orders Special Forces Unit Squadron 69 to be a part of it. There is no squadron better suited for a mission to destroy an enemy nuclear program than Squadron 69. 25 years earlier, eight Hammer Squadron pilots flew into Iraq to bomb a nuclear facility being built by Saddam Hussein. Evading Iraq air defenses, they would take out the facility in a clinical strike. But about a quarter century later, an attack on Syria is a much harder prospect. For a decade, Syria had been developing one of the most formidable anti-aircraft defense systems in the world. They have installed the Russian-built TORM-1 air defense system and have multiple surface-to-air missiles ready to launch against any air attack. Nothing is easy when it comes to attacking a country that has hundreds, if not thousands, of anti-aircraft systems, and so the Israelis worked hard on their countermeasures. The Hammer Squadron has aircraft specifically designed to evade such air defenses. The US made F-15 and F-16 fighter bombers. The F-16 is well equipped to cope with a lock-on of heavy missile battery and can break the lock and can use some ECM flares against guided missiles and some electronic warfare against the same batteries. They also carry electronic countermeasures that can fool the Syrian air defense system and allow the attacking craft to enter Syrian airspace undetected. Just some evidence on how they knew there was a nuclear facility in Syria. The Mossad was able to attain the one piece of reliable information that proved that the Syrians and North Koreans are involved in a joint nuclear front. Thanks to a daring operation against one Syrian nuclear scientist in Vienna just a few months before the raid on the reactors. In the years before, between 2004 and early 2007, both the CIA and other entities of American intelligence, along with the Israeli military intelligence, Mossad, flagged that specific site as being suspected. They also had some hints and some fragments on through information that the relations between Syria and North Korea are not just in relevance to missiles, but it also might have been some extremely destructive nuclear warheads. There was an officer in military intelligence who said, I think that they're trying to build a bomb in Syria in the same way that they built a nuclear bomb in North Korea. But there was no proof. The proof was obtained in the form of pictures that were stolen from the chief of the Syrian Nuclear Energy Organization when he traveled to Vienna. These pictures were later given by the CIA to Congress in order to prove that North Korea is the major devil. These were ground photographs of the reactor, and they left no room for imagination. And with them, Israeli could approach the U.S. and say that North Koreans are building a facility in Syria. The meaning of that can only be one thing. No research, no nuclear energy for peaceful purposes, Syria is building the atomic bomb. Hey, if you've liked the video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe. A date is yet to be decided for the operation, but then Prime Minister Olmert receives intelligence that forces in his end Mossad has detected activity on the Syrian coast. North Korean ships were arriving at the port of Tardis in Syria. These ships are carrying the final materials Syrians need for the al kabar reactor to become fully operational. Olmert has to act now, and Hammer Squadron pilots are ordered to take off. Even now, they have no idea what the target is. When going into operation outside the box, there were two sets of planes that took off around midnight in early September. The F-16s and the F-15s take off 20 seconds apart, armed with 500-pound AMG-65 bombs. They head out to sea at nearly 600 miles an hour and follow a route designed to avoid detection by Syrian air defenses. 
What the Israeli forces did was map a route that would take planes to the west over the Mediterranean, the north, and then east over Turkish airspace. Israeli prime minister and senior military commanders gather in the Israeli Air Force's underground command center known as the Pit. Here they monitor the route up of fighter bombers. Once it's established that there are no technical faults with any of the planes, three of the F-15s are ordered to return home and the remaining seven continued on the planned route at low altitude to avoid radar detection. It is only now that the pilots are told that this is a live mission and that they're flying into heavily defended Syrian airspace. The Hammer Squadron are now just minutes from entering Syrian headspace and straight into the crosshairs of Syria's formidable air defenses. As the planes approach Syrian airspace, it is now that they will encounter their enemy's air defense systems. The military side of the operation involved somehow evading the Syrian radar so as not to alert the Syrians to their presence using codes allegedly sold to them by Russians. The Syrian system think that everything was normal because their radar screens were absolutely fine and empty, but the Israeli planes were invisible. The Syrians didn't even know they were under attack. Now in enemy airspace, they move to the next stage with precise coordinates of the Al-Kabar complex that are sent to the Israeli pilots' onboard computers. In Tel Aviv, they have no idea what's going on. Then comes a radio transmission. It is the single word, Arizona, the code word that confirms the bombs have found their target. Not a single Israeli plane has been lost, and the reactor has been totally destroyed. There is nothing left, really, but a smoking ruin of the reactor. After the operation, the most dangerous part of the mission is over, when you release the bombs. The pilots exit Syrian airspace at high speeds. The mission is a complete success. They destroyed their target, they exited, and they lost nothing. Ulmert immediately telephones the White House to tell President Bush that something that never existed doesn't exist anymore. Now there's a tense wait for the Syrian response. Ulmert is confident that the Syrians won't risk reacting publicly, but he cannot remain certain. Immediately after the raid, he had sent a message to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad saying that Israel would not openly take credit for the raid. They calculated that if they didn't make too much noise about it, it might be in a sense best interest simply to ignore it. Sure enough, the gamble pays off as Syrian state news announces that Israeli planes had been repelled from Syrian airspace. It is a lie, but both countries are content to pretend that the bombing never happened, and it seems Ulmert has successfully safeguarded Israel's future. But one thing still bothers Ulmert, and that's how Syria and North Korea managed to develop a nuclear weapons program in complete secrecy for seven years. Israel didn't know about the number one project that the Syrians were engaged with. Now, a nuclear reactor is not something that's easy to hide. It's a huge facility, so Mossad begins investigating how Syria managed to keep the al Qabar facility a secret. What they uncover is that the Syrians had developed a networking system that avoided all electronic communications. They took a flight back in time and did it by not using any sort of electronic transmission. Every time they want to send a message, they will print the hard copy, put it in an envelope, seal it with wax, write top secret, and build a network of couriers that would take these envelopes from place to place. The heart of this communication system is a man renowned for his hatred of Israel and one of the most powerful men in Syria, General Mohammed Suleiman. He was the most powerful and closest advisor to the current leader of Syria. Assad. His office was just across the hall from the office of the president in the presidential palace in Damascus. Because of his closeness to the president, Suleiman is known as Assad's shadow. He was the mastermind behind Syria's top secret nuclear program, and he had credit for the compartmentalization within the Syrian government that allowed him to undertake this project for years. It's hardly a secret now that Israel destroyed what their intelligence services said was a Syrian nuclear reactor more than a decade ago, but it's now officially acknowledging that fact and detailing the operation for the first time. Israel's military released cockpit videos of the airstrike in the early hours of September 6, 2007. The isolated building next to the Euphrates River entirely obliterated, unlike a similar strike on an Iraqi reactor in 1981, which sparked international commendation. The celebrations took place in secret, as the official policy was silence until now. The message from the 2007 attack on the reactor is that Israel will not tolerate construction that could pose an existential threat to the state of Israel. This was the message in 1981, this was the message in 2007, and this is the future message for their enemies. Israel may have been publicly silent at this time, but behind the scenes, it was working to convince the international community of its assessment that the reactor was a virtual replica 
replica of North Korea's facility. Built with extensive help from North Korea, its purpose was to produce weapons-grade plutonium. After the operation, intelligence officers presented to the heads of the state of Europe, the United States, Russia, and the Arab states intelligence information that sustained the jurisdiction for this attack in order to help them support and convince global audience. The decision to go public comes ahead of the publication of the memoirs of the man who ordered the attack, then Prime Minister Ulmer. More significantly, it helped for a clear threat to Iran at the time when Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was repeatedly warning the Israeli public and foreign leaders about Iran's military activity inside Syria and its current nuclear program at home. Netanyahu has been urging Donald Trump to pull the U.S. out of the multilateral Iran nuclear deal. Israel also carried out extensive airstrikes inside Syria after one of the fighters was shot down in an incident triggered by what Israel said was an incursion into its territory by an Iranian drone. There were fears then of a wider escalation, fears which haven't gone away. That's it for today. If you liked what you saw, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell so you can see all the newest videos we have when they come up. See y'all next time.